Welcome to Transforming Human Consciousness. I'm Kayvon Yeola, your host, and this program is sponsored by the Spiritual Assembly of the Baha'is of Clermont. Baha'is believe that racism is the most challenging and vital issue facing America, and education in the principle of the oneness of humanity is the shortest route out of prejudice and poverty. Baha'i faith calls attention to the progressive nature of God's revelation and the significance of its role in our human growth and also in the progress of our civilization and believes that no serious attempt to set human affairs aright to achieve world peace can ignore religion. Our guests come from all diverse backgrounds, religions, cultures, ages, but there's one thing we have in common and that is the support of the spiritual principle of the oneness of all humankind. Our hope is to encourage you to examine the transforming power of the words of Baha'u'llah, the prophet founder of the Baha'i faith, in helping us grow and ushering in the age of the oneness of all humankind. And today with me, I have a very special distinguished guest, Dr. Sonia Blackman. Dr. Bl Blackman, Sonia, is a professor of psychology at Cal Poly. She's an artist, and she uses her art and her profession in serving the community, in humanity, in transforming consciousness, in helping us grow. Welcome, Dr. Thank Blackman. Um, I would like to call you Sonia, is that OK? Hi. Sonia, um, how do you use your art? Uh, in changing society, in enriching the society. I know you do a lot of work with the youth, um, students, especially women. So how is it used? I'll tell you, myself as a teenager, I used art to really explain and deal with strong feelings. Mm -hmm. And adolescence is a time when we have really strong feelings and we tend to want to act out and not have complete control or have a positive avenue for expression. And with all the budgetary cutbacks in the school system, the biggest cuts come with music, drama, and, and art. That's right. So I had taught art in a variety of venues with uh, adults and children before I became a psychologist. And I believe that everyone has a creative spirit, if you will. Mm -hmm. and everyone has talent and it's a teacher's responsibility to build on whatever someone possesses. Mm -hmm. So I was in particular interested because I was reading a lot of media portrayals of adolescent females and primarily when women were portrayed, these teens, it was in terms of what are their pregnancy rates. All the negatives. All the negatives. Yeah. And I wondered, how do you develop yourself as a positive human being when you're portrayed in the media in such a fashion? Mm -hmm. And I decided to join my psychology as kind of a potentiating individual and my art to work with teen females because mm -hmm. primarily people don't work with the females because the males are in drive-by shootings and there's a need to do something immediately. So they get more in trouble? They get more. They get into more spectacular trouble. <laughs> Whereas the females tend to become single mothers and on an avenue of poverty. And that's not very spectacular. No, it's not spectacular, but it's devastating to a culture. Mm -hmm. So I really wanted to see, I also wanted to know who these people were, mm -hmm. because I also read the same news and the same media. And I was really curious and somewhat apprehensive because the, there is a lot of danger in high schools these days and I wanted to see you know who are these people what are they like and are they so different from the girl I once was I was one of my questions mm -hmm. are they different or are they primarily the same I see. so from there on um, how did you get in touch and how did you connect with well, the students I had applied for a grant California Lottery Grant, which I received, mm -hmm. and I worked with the superintendent of schools for Pomona Unified School District. Mm -hmm. This was last spring, the first mm -hmm. time I did this project, and I, I said I really, you know, it's like, I have a dream. It was one of those, well, I have mm -hmm. a dream, I really want to try this, mm -hmm. and he said, go ahead. And everyone I met just said, just go, go, go do it. 
later, after they saw how wonderful it was when it turned out, they said, I never thought you could do it. <laughs> I was really happy they didn't say anything at the time. <laughs> but uh, that's facilitated. I met with the principal of Gary High School last mm -hmm. spring and mm -hmm. told him what the project was about, and he was very excited. Mm -hmm. And uh, resource teachers, just everyone was really cooperative. So the first effort was working with Latinas, mm -hmm. and I asked for them to not be seniors because it's very difficult to come in the end of someone's senior year and have an impact right. towards their future. And we met after school, I see. and it was like two and a half hours, and they wanted to do it, I thought two days a week, they wanted to do it four or five times a week. Uh -huh. So they were very involved and very committed. It was a huge effort because they took school, and they came to my class, they went home for dinner, they did their homework, and they went to sleep. Was it in the school site? It was site? in the school site, and that's really important when you work in the high schools, these young people. Their parents are quite strict, and they're either at home or they're in school. I see. So they're not allowed to walk home. Mm -hmm. uh, they're really watched, and you know, th their parents are apprehensive about their safety as well. Yeah. So these were you know, actually an average um, junior high no, uh, they students? were high school students, okay. and uh, we just asked teachers to recommend s who might benefit from such a program mm -hmm. or who might benefit from getting to know me. I see. Because that was part of the process was for me to get the, to know them and them to get to know me, mm -hmm. so that if, if they want to go to a university, mm -hmm. they learn that these professors are not somebody strange. I see. So w to you, this was... Um, to serve opening the doors for opening these students the doors. to feel more comfortable with the um, professor and the whole idea of going continuing to college and university. Yeah, and, the, and this was someone who said, well, of course you can go. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing stands in your way. I see. And I'm ready to help. And, mm -hmm. and that was really the process that went on as a building up of trust of, uh, from both sides. Did you, did you, out of this experience, did you learn things which were surprising to you? A lot, a lot. They always say that the best, the teacher learns the most, That's and I would have to agree. That's very true. Uh, I had a lot of suppositions about um, these young women and what their life must be like, mm -hmm. and I was entirely wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, I had no idea how restricted their lives had to be. You know, mm -hmm. I can imagine if they were my child, I might have the same rules, mm -hmm. but I didn't really imagine it. Uh, n I kept talking to them. I said, the university is going to have a gallery showing next fall. Mm -hmm. And they looked at it like, oh, well, you know. Finally, I asked, I said, do you know what a gallery is? No. I had never been to a I gallery? I had never been to an art gallery, so I organized a trip to the university mm -hmm. to go to the gallery. And they were most amazed by the library. Because in the this high school, is, uh, the library... Pomona, uh, this is the Cal Poly? At or? Cal Poly Library. I see, I see. Because in their school, the library is one room. I see. And there's four or five flights in the library at Cal Poly. Yeah. And they insisted on going on every single floor to make sure there were really that many books <laughs> that would be in that library. That's very interesting. So the kinds of things they paid attention to were informative for me as well. Mm -hmm. And they did ask if there were gangs at the university. Do you, do you think that our high school students on the average really that, that's their knowledge of mm, the library or the art gallery? Is that a universal thing or this was particular to this particular uh, young women? women yeah. It may be to lower income children I because uh, I also do evaluation research and also look at uh, parent involvement. And very often, if you're a working parent, there's only so much time you have. So if you try to teach your child in the, in the general day of how things go on for a daily person, they may say, well, I'll take them to the market and I'll teach them about produce and how to buy and how to shop. Mm -hmm. But there isn't that energy, right. well, you know, there isn't that energy to say, well, Al, instead of right. doing the laundry, right. let's go to an art gallery. Right. Unless your parent is going to school and has to sit in the library and study. That's it. That's, right. it. <laughs> no. That's it. Because it, it's very to hard. See it. yeah. so. very hard. That's very interesting. It, it's, um, it's hard to m imagine, I guess, for some of us that um, there are children out there who have never been exposed to a big library. That's true. Yeah, because our TV show doesn't show that quite often, does it? <laughs> no, not at all. Um, what other um, 
aspects of this project was interesting to you or um, was surprising or was well, uh, eye-opening? Well, they were beautiful young women you know, internally and externally. Mm -hmm. And I had anticipated when they started to paint, they would paint their beauty mm -hmm. in sort of doll fashion. But they really didn't. They painted their strongest self. Mm -hmm. uh, the paintings were very bold. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of power to them. A lot of, because I just said, here's a mirror. None of them were artists. I said, here's how you mix paint. And I would just go around to each one and kind of help them with whatever their image was. And uh, so the painting, I said, these are really great, mm. you know, and strong. The strength of the young woman was a surprise to me. Mm, did you um, help them um, uh, kind of interpret it and evaluate it, or they did themselves? They did themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's interesting is the first big problem happened on the first painting, mm -hmm. and it was well, how do you mix skin color uh -huh. for Latin American women? That's very interesting. Uh, I had painted people, you know, from the Pacific, um, Hawaiians, Japanese, you know, the Asian Pacific area. But we got here, and I was going, well, let's just experiment. If you put too much brown in it, they mm. looked African American. Yeah. If there was too much yellow, they yeah. looked Asian. Yeah. I mean, it was really uh, the whole process of really uh, coming into terms with. And that. what are the features that they have yeah. that allow them to look Asian or African American yeah. if there's a different skin tone? That's very interesting. That is a fascinating topic. Um, let's just go ahead and take a break, and then okay. we're going to come back and continue on that note, that sounds fascinating. That, that itself is an interesting lesson in the whole concept of oneness of humanity and then Very yet much. the diversity that we have and the hues and the shades, the, the mm, characteristics that makes us distinct. Mm -hmm. that's, that's great. Um, please stay tuned with us. We're going to take a short break and then we'll be back. Welcome back to Transforming Human Consciousness. We're going to continue our conversation here with Dr. Sonia Blackman about the whole process of her work in transforming the lives of the young women at, um, generally now we're talking about Pomona High School. No, this is Gary High School. Gary High School in Pomona. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about um, how these women um, had to figure out the distinctive features of their own self in order to bring out the culture or the ethnic, the personal aspect mm -hmm. of themselves, the skin color, the, the cheekbone or whatever aspects of whatever. Um, do you have any of the paintings or any of the? Yeah, I'd like to share with you one uh, from the first group. Uh, this is by Linda. Gardia, mm -hmm. and uh, she was a freshman when she did this painting. I see. And the strength in the painting and the Mexican heritage yes, in the obvious. painting is very, very obvious. Yeah. This is without her having studied Mexican artists, yeah. and as if she has incorporated in herself her culture, which yeah. of course she has. And uh, that was the other interesting thing to me, is that these girls come from a Latin world, and they are still in a Latin world. I see. Seventy percent of the kids at school are Spanish-speaking. They speak Spanish at home. They watch the Spanish soaps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is their world. Yeah. Yeah. So that uh, I like this painting in particular because it showed the strength of this young woman. Uh, also, because we didn't have money for framing, mm -hmm. you know, we just painted mm -hmm. around the sides so that there was no need for a frame. I see. So it's, um, it's complete it's in itself. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And the next is a painting I did of a young woman. This was one. One way to teach them is that I would bring in a material or I'd start a technique, and that was my way of teaching them. And in this one, for example, there's a heavy underlay. Right. It's and very textured. Very textured. Yeah. So rather than tell them about texture, I actually show them how to use it I before see. I came in. Uh -huh. And then they would get excited about the idea, and then I would show them how to use right. it. 
Right. So, and in this, uh, this young woman uh, was originally from Nicaragua. I and see. to some extent, I wanted to show that by the roughness. It's a war-torn country. There's a lot of strife there. Mm -hmm. um, but also, I put bird songs because when we didn't have music, she would make bird sounds. I see. It was very enchanting <laughs> and uh, very endearing. And, and, and again, very, very strong young woman. I see. I noticed the eyes of have greens in them and yellow mm -hmm. in them and is that the um, that's what she, the way she are like uh -huh. mm -hmm. and she has her hair has many different shades of brown mm -hmm. is that the way mm -hmm. so interesting and uh, it was kind of interesting for me too because each time I'd bring a painting I'd always be a little apprehensive because are they going to like the way I portrayed them? Will they mm. feel an insult? I see. You know, because you never know. So what was their reaction? I'm they curious. liked them. Really? They really did. And the more unusual I did them, the better they liked it. I so see. I think there's a new sophistication. And we talked about some of the limitations, like not going to an art gallery. But these children are very sophisticated in their consumption of images. Mm -hmm. It's from MTV and watching, you know, very far out images mm -hmm. on uh, videos mm -hmm. that they are very accepting mm -hmm. of what you might do. One, I had no hair on her. I didn't give her any eyes, and I was really like, oh, well, I'm going to show this to you, mm -hmm. and you're probably not going to like it, but I'll show it anyway. She loved it. I see. So that it didn't bother her to have that feeling, and mm -hmm. that she knew the overall image was the important part of it. I see. So okay. that was interesting. The Some of the other work I have, we had an art show at the university, and we sold 75% of the children's work. That's very impressive. It was I mean, that is very, very exciting. And Who were the people who bought the? Primarily women faculty. It's very interesting. Primarily. And very often they'd say to me, well, if she's going to be around the university, I would let me know. I want to take her to lunch. So really what you're doing, you're building bridges between these students way before they even coming to university mm -hmm. and having um, you know planted their um, their care and their love in the hearts of people in the university That's true. Yes. When and when they come to their offices they're going to see the paintings because faculty put them in their That's offices really, what a beautiful way of they really <laughs> like entering them. a university and the thing with the women is they they said well, no one will buy this i'll have to pay somebody to take it and i said no they're very good someone's going to buy it it's a bargain and sure enough, they did. And uh, I'm going to take them around to meet the people who bought their paintings. And that is uh, wonderful. So it is really not a just one shot in the dark. It is a no. And this, this is really what I found out. That was my original image of how things would go. Well, what really turned out is they needed summer jobs. So I tried to help them find summer jobs. Then they needed to apply to the university. So I tried to help them study for the SAT. Now, there's so many things that stand in people's way, for example. So even if a university is open to students, there's so many little things that stand mm -hmm. in your way that I had to monitor every application mm -hmm. through the whole process. Mm -hmm. So, and even now, you know, I was talking to one other woman who is uh, of Latin American descent, and she's saying, well, you know, they're going to need mentoring mm -hmm. when they're there. And I said, yes, I'm going to have a party. I'm going to invite all of them That's and wonderful. all of the faculty who had right. helped me, the right. staff, right. and say, these are your new support right. networks. That is so wonderful. You know, it reminds me really of um, making through the whole concept that it takes a village to educate a person. And this is really what you're doing is really to bridging and making this village become whole and one. Mm -hmm. Because it, the process is not over. Yeah. And it's, it's a hard one. Yes, it really is. Yes. But, uh, and they, they do need those role models and those mentors, and those loving supports. Mm -hmm. Once they get there, it's not the job is not done. No, no, it's a long term thing. So it's you plant it for them. In yeah, these and it's you know supports. we talk on the phone and it's a long term commitment. Uh, had to be mm -hmm. is what I realized. Uh, and I, th I you mentioned that there was another project, very similar project. Is that? that you had? Yes. I decided to work with African-American teens mm -hmm. and again with women and to really see 
if what happened the first time was just a magic chemistry. I see. Yeah. Or was it a real process? Is this something that really does work? Could be replicated. Could be replicated. Mm -hmm. So it was a testing out of what I did, because mm -hmm. the first was very successful. I was mm -hmm. very pleased with mm -hmm. it, and I'm now writing a book about that. I see. And What's the book called? The book will be Imágenes Latinas, which is Latin images, A Brush Across the Mirror. I see. That's a working title. Yeah. No titles sound really good okay. at this point, yeah. but um, so that process is done. Mm -hmm. But uh, so I went into Pomona High School this time, mm -hmm. and it was a difficult year at Pomona High. There had been some riots, and when I first showed up, there was always a police car in the driveway, and that was a strange. I thought my image is it's a speed trap. He's trying to catch people <laughs> speeding by the school, <laughs> and they said no. It's for there to be a police presence. Always. Always. Oh my God. And as a matter of fact, one day I came and there were eight or ten police cars and school had been let out mm. and uh, there had been an altercation and one of the young women that I was working with had been chased oh. uh, by some girls with a knife. Oh my God. So, you know, it was re that's their reality and that's what life is like for them. Um, and I'd like to share with you mm. her painting. Her name was Autumn, mm -hmm. and you can see immediately that the images are quite different. Mm -hmm. And again, there's a boldness of spirit mm -hmm. that really shows, and yeah. uh, a real strength mm -hmm. that uh, mm -hmm. I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. my notion always is to be incorporating. If someone you know, has a friend who wants to come in who hasn't been recommended by a teacher, I said, oh, I said, oh, fine, yeah. you know, whichever works. But one of the young women said she was a senior and her art teacher really wanted me to work with her. He really liked her and she said, well, I babysit for my younger sister. Mm. So I said, bring her too. <laughs> How old was the so younger sister? <laughs> she was just in seventh grade. <laughs> and it worked very well to solidify the group because it was very family then. Yes. They were used to Which different is the generation. nature of the the culture. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yes. absolutely. So it worked out really well. Yes. And this young woman did graduate, and uh, she's going to be going to De Vere's Business College. That's beautiful. Her, she really could draw, but she couldn't paint when she first came into the class. And this shows you the kind of growth mm -hmm. that she has made. Mm -hmm. And it's a very unity yes looking painting yes it's uh, yes. and very very strong yes and uh, yes. this is the painting of her younger sister yes. which again she had started out drawing you know what you might expect from someone yes. and had gotten very sophisticated yes it is so by the end and could be hung anyway yes it is so that's depending <laughs> what you want yes, it's so, so yes, it's it was a very exciting experience and the last one I have, and then I'm, I'm done with all of these, is one that I did of uh, one of the young women. I see. And uh, she wanted to incorporate African colors I in see. her painting. Yeah. And they all had very interesting hairstyles. So I tried to incorporate some of the braids and beads. And again, this, is, this was material that I brought in for her to see yeah. as well that was woven yeah. to show her how to do it. That's wonderful. So. Yeah, it looks like African material. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's wonderful. And it's just mm, so encouraging to, to look at and so inspiring. It must have been a wonderful project. And um, I'm wondering, um, uh, since we don't have so much time, but I'd like to hear, what are your hopes and what are your future plans in this? Mm. Is it going to continue? Is it going to end? Well, the one thing the students always ask about the third week is, well, are we going to do this in the summer? Mm -hmm. Are we going to do this next year? And I say, you know, you know, I'm giving my time now, but I can't afford to give any more. Right. It's yeah. very costly financially for That's me so to true. not work. Yeah. And um, but what I would like to do, and I've talked to the superintendent of schools, is try to find a set up a way for art students at Cal Poly to come into the high schools to teach after school, but somehow for the city to give them studio space because mm -hmm. they need a place to paint themselves. Mm -hmm. So that's my big dream for someone else to keep the work going. I hope it comes through. Me too. And thank you so much for.
being my guest. Thank you. And uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to hear the progress of your projects in future again. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Blackman. Um, if you would like to connect with us and share with us your comments, your views, please contact us, care of Baha'i Faith, Claremont, PO Box 686. For Transforming Human Consciousness, I'm Kevon Yehola. Thank you for being with us.